putting on those pandemic pounds. All right. Um, traditionally, this is the time we are like, oh, I didn't put it off till New Year's, right? I don't even know if we're going to have a New Year's because of the COVID. <laughs> I don't know. Are they canceling? It depends on our car score. How down we get the car score, we're going to have a New Year's. Uh, but I wanted to bring uh, Jess Rosario from uh, Boca Box on to kind of just um, talk about, you know, eating habits during the holidays, during the pandemic. Uh, and it's brought to you by the Thrive Coalition. Uh, it's a health and wellness uh, segment. Our partners in the Thrive Coalition reminding you that it takes an entire village, an island even, to raise healthy and drug-free youth. So, uh, Jesse from Boca Box. Good morning, Chewy. Good morning. Uh, hold on. Let us unmute you. Again? Oh, let me turn that on. Yeah. Okay. Hey there. Hi. Oh, hi. Morning. Hi. <laughs> hi. hi. Operator hey. error right on, on Chris's right part. My bad. My bad, Jeff. Uh, so volume, guess... volume up. Car score down. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Jesse, so what are you just seeing? I mean, maybe with the people in your circle uh, during the pandemic, how challenging has it been uh, to kind of maintain uh, not just, you know, a, a steady, consistent, exercise routine but also diet oh man it's um my lifestyle has changed dramatically since covid uh you guys you, you guys know me i used to be at the gym with you guys almost every single morning um and i was really active but now that that's dropped to less than half of what i used to do um i mainly work out at home or i'm running on the road with my family uh, my circle or my bubble is super small, very, very small. I have um, a one-year-old at home and my wife has very bad asthma. My son has asthma, so we try not to venture out just so that we're not, um, you know, we don't come in contact with people. Uh, we've had to change everything, um, just the way we live. Even, even things at my, my work at the Boca Box, we've changed operations just so that Everybody has ample space to move around. Everyone's six feet apart. Everybody has masks. We're uh, sanitizing, washing our hands as much as possible. Uh, you know, it's, it's just what we have to do to stay safe now. But um, even with, oh man, even with our, our eating habits, that's changed. The first part of the pandemic, I, you know, I was trying to work out hard, trying to eat right, but then I got depressed and I, said screw it i'm gonna eat whatever i want and slow down on the working out gain weight and so with the second lockdown i i had to make some changes so uh, like right now we're ending our um the my team at the Boca box we did a i think it was an eight week body fat challenge we're supposed to lose as much body fat as we can by eating right and exercising and um that's coming to a close tomorrow so we'll figure out who won I think a lot of people can relate, uh, Chuby. At the beginning of the pandemic, it was like, okay, okay. We didn't know how long it was going to be. But um, you're right. That middle stretch is where I think a lot of people just kind of fell flat. I mean, myself included. I had a whole routine going. I was doing like 100 squats a day and, you know, yeah. doing all this walking and, you know, just kind of trying to do something every day. And then it hit me that this could stretch into next year and – just being in here on the radio, dealing with all this, not just dealing with all the information, but dealing with a lot of the idiocy that <laughs> uh, comes with it. And sometimes it was a, like a heavy load to bear. So when we took a little break in between containing COVID and the link, fortunately I was able to uh, regroup and um, yeah, we always struggle with diet, but I, I think just baseline, I try and do something every day, whether that's a, you know, a crazy circuit or something like, you know, yesterday it was just some, ab stuff you know i mean really bang yeah, you know, on. <laughs> I, my family uh, you know we can't we cannot control everything that's outside of our bubble you know but we can control ourselves we can't control what we eat what we do at home um so we have to adapt with the times um and that doesn't mean that we stay home and and um lock down in the sense that we're not doing anything uh but we have to find ways to move forward with the life that we're given so, you know, we've been doing things like running in areas that is not highly crowded. Um, my son and I recently took up surfing. Uh, we go early, early in the morning, just because like we went around the island on the weekend and California Bay was packed, like a hundred people surfing, you know? So 
we we try to control our environment, control um, how we stay safe, and we just have to move forward. That that's, that's all we can do. Yeah. See, I I haven't been as active as Chris. <laughs> I mean, I remember, I remember when before, right before the pandemic, we were all what roaring at four because we were all training for the Guam, uh, UGM. Uh, yeah, the UGM, yeah. and then uh, the March fifteenth, I think it was, when we got the first three cases. It life changed. I was happy. I, I'm sorry, I wasn't happy that the pandemic <laughs> hit, but I was kind of like, oh god, now I don't have to do this UGM. Uh, see, I liked getting up early. And, no, I did, and yeah, out. but it was like it's okay to get up early and work out, but not like three months in a row. Whoa, that was a little. Yeah. No, but so, uh, truly, I ended up doing the UGM anyway, so it's mm -hmm. not like I totally flaked on it. Yeah. Right. Well, I totally yeah. flaked on everything. I mean, I got I got the equipment, <laughs> and I just haven't been able to like, you know, do anything. Right. Uh, but how key you is know, that? I got to do something soon. How key is that, Jess? Uh, like, let's say someone like Sabrina, right? She's she just in this rut where, you know, it's a routine. You go into work, you come home, you're just too beat to do anything. How key is that exercise and what immediate benefit? Because a lot of people are thinking, oh, my God, I'm just in the hole so much. I need to lose 20 pounds, whatever. What's the point, right? But there is an immediate reward when you when you do something every day, right, Chuby? I, I feel that not only for our physical health is exercise important, but our mental health. Um, I think more than anything, the pandemic has shown us how important taking care of your, your mental health is. You know, I, again, I, my family, myself, my family, we, during that middle period, we, we got depressed. We didn't want to do anything. I, I, I honestly drank way more than I needed to. And so I had to take a step back and be like, okay, this is not, it's not healthy for me. It's not doing me any good physically and mentally. So um, I pulled, kind of pulled away from that, uh, started, I did anything, you know, I, I couldn't go to the gym and I was sad about that. Um, I couldn't work out with people as much as I wanted to. Uh, so I had to just look at what my options were. Easy option was um, I fixed up my bike and I would go riding in the morning or riding after work. I take my family walking or running here in Aganya and um, just did anything to get out of the house. I think that was the biggest thing. Is the house was was tearing us apart. You know, we were fighting with the kids, fighting with my wife. We we're just, you know, at each other's throats and we needed to get out of the house and do something. So, mm -hmm. you know, for, for anyone that is, is kind of trying to struggle with trying to get out of that, way, just do anything. Get out of the house, yeah. walk, get some sun. Um, Anything is better than sitting down and watching another marathon and you know. Okay, so I take it back. I did walk a few times. Okay, so <laughs> I wasn't just you're feeling sit, attacked sitting at home eating you know popsicles. But, yeah. but yeah, I did get to go out and walk a few times. And but you're right, you know, Chuby. When I went out, like I go to Tumon and walk uh, with with my friend, it, it was packed, and I, I felt like oh wow, there's a lot of people here. Um, I, I need to go, you're right, at, at a different time. And it was kind of, I was nervous. I was wearing my mask. Uh, even when it was raining when I was walking, I left my mask on. That's difficult to do. I was pretty stupid. I don't know why I did that, but I was just that paranoid that I felt like I had to just wear my mask even though it was, was raining because there were just so many people. I'll tell you what, even if for me and my son, you know, we've um, every weekend we cut the grass. And we usually, usually cut the grass like every two to three weeks, but... I mean, it was a way for us to just get out of the house. We cut the grass, and our grass has never looked better. So, and we've, you know, things like painting the house, doing yard work, that that goes a long way. You know, you're fixing up your house, and you're getting some sort of uh, physical activity. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about a diet. So your advice to those people who are in that rut, just get out, do anything, you know, take a walk. Uh, and, you know, dealing with a lot of stress of this uh, pandemic, because I know that we're all carrying stress that we might not even know we're carrying. Um, I find what's helpful is doing things like ball slams or, you know, violent type workouts, like the sledgehammer on the tire thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that makes me feel good. And I just picture issues on the ground and I'm slamming the ball into them or issues. I don't even know if that's healthy, but yeah. you know, I, just, <laughs> it is. 
I mean, right? Because you want to do like walking is okay, but I'm under so much stress. Walking is like not going to help. I got to do like, you know, something like, Arr. yeah, you got to release that energy somehow. Right. You know? Yeah. And if it's punching, punching a, a bag or a, I, I used to put tires against the tree and kick the, kick the tree, you know, but right, yeah. anything that let that aggression out, you got to, you got to do something. What about, but, you know, even I feel that, you know, aside from exercising and, and being physically active, what you eat plays a major role in how you feel. Right. You know, uh, food affects our hormones no matter what. And if we're eating crap, then we're going to feel like crap. Um, so uh, with my family, again, I'm, I'm always going to relate to what we've done because I, I feel that we're pretty realistic with our approach to, to life and nutrition and fitness. Um, but my family, again, we we were we got into the habit of eating a lot of takeout. Um, we wanted to, you know, support businesses that were struggling, so we ordered out a lot. Um, but we started feeling that, you know, wasn't as healthy as we should be feeling. So we took some time to uh, to start buying a little bit more groceries. Uh, my wife even did that um, that Payless order online thing, so we didn't have to go into the stores all the time. Um, but we started making our food, started experimenting, and you know, we started eating a lot healthier, which then pays off because we feel a lot better. We wake up in, well, I have to wake up early in the morning to uh, to get things cooking at the Boca Box, but I noticed that if I'm eating like crap, I have a hard time waking up. So I had to really change my diet to make sure that I'm when I wake up, I'm I'm ready to go. You know, I'm not dragging my feet. I'm not taking five minutes in the bed trying to you know think about like oh my god, what am I going to do today? When I wake up, I'm I'm ready to go. I get ready, head out the door, and I'm I'm working all the way till till I, I get home. You know. Uh, let's talk about, so we talk about, uh, you know, garbage in, garbage out, value exercise. Let's kind of switch gears and uh, focus a little bit on uh, what you guys have been doing uh, with Boca Box. Because I saw you had a, a Boca Thanksgiving. Man, it looked good, dude. Yeah, it's, you know, for, for the holidays, a lot of people are, a lot of people right now are trying to get back into fitness and trying to lose some weight. But this is the time starting Thanksgiving all the way to New Year's when people are like, screw it. It's going to be too many parties and whatever, so I'm just going to I'm going to go through the motions. Uh, the pandemic gives us, um, I, I guess, a way not to attend all those parties anymore, so we don't have to worry about that. But we're still faced with the option and the choices to eat um, more than we need to. And um, I still do a lot of nutrition consultations uh, via Zoom uh, with my customers, and a lot of times they ask, you know, how how do I stay healthy through the holiday season? And that's been a big topic the past week. And I always like to tell people that, you know, don't don't focus just on that one day because that one day is not gonna it's not gonna hurt you. You know, it, we we eat Thanksgiving meals once, twice, twice a year, Thanksgiving and the day after, you know. So we don't have to worry about it. We we're looking at consistency when we eat. So if you're consistently eating healthy, don't worry about it. Take take this time off and eating healthy, enjoy the family, enjoy the food. Uh, but if you're really adamant about trying to eat healthy, my tip is don't look at ways to take things off of your plate. Let's not worry about it, right? Let's worry about adding things to your plate that will make your meal more healthy. So usually people will eat mashed potatoes, rice, turkey, gravy, candied yams, and what else is there, you know? Um, you can eat those things in moderation, but let's look at adding more vegetables to that plate. Is there a salad? Is there... Uh, my big thing the past week was hog and suni. I had like twice because we made it here at the Boca Box. So hog and suni is coconut milk and spinach. That's what's bad about that? You know, that's delicious and healthy. Um, we uh, there's things like escabeche, which has you know fish and uh, vegetables mixed with vinegar and turmeric. That's super healthy and nutritious. Uh, so look at ways to add more vegetables and foods onto your plates rather than looking at ways to take things off. You know, so that way you're still enjoying the holidays and not struggling with yourself to like, oh man, I can't, I can't eat this or I can't eat that. Eat, eat it. Just be moderate about it, but eat more fruits and vegetables than anything else. So let's say you're you're at a gathering of five or less for Thanksgiving, the so-called traditional Thanksgiving spread Guam style. What mm -hmm. four or five items would Chuby put on that plate? That has oh. the most bang for the buck and, you know, tastes good. And, and do you kind of like 
okay, I'm going to eat this, so that means I'm going to bump up the veggies or whatever. Just how do you do it? Yeah, so I, the first thing I do, and, and this is even before COVID or whatever, right? Whenever I went to parties, I would always scan the table. I scan the table and I look at, okay, what are my options? You know, there's a bunch of meat. There's a bunch of carbs. Where are my vegetables? And I look for the vegetables first and I'll make myself a plate of vegetables, just vegetables, whether it's salad or yams or um, what else is there? Like I said, agansuni or whatever. Um, crab salad, you know, the, the broccoli and crab. I'll look for that and I'll load up one plate full of vegetables. I'll eat that first and then I'll go back for my second helping and that's where I'll get like my protein, uh, the lumpia and stuff like that. But if there's five things that I need to have on my plate this Thanksgiving, it's going to be, um, well, of course, vegetables, but let's not talk vegetables, let's talk outside of that. Turkey, stuffing, and the chamorro stuffing, you know, the one, with, uh, not the stove top, but, uh, uh, what do you call it? Det you or? Rizzetto. Yeah, whatever that is, the ground beef with uh, the breadcrumbs and the olives and the pimentos. That, a uh, little bit of mashed potatoes, and uh, candy yams. That's that's my go-to. Mm. That's what I'm gonna look. That's well, I'm making all of that Thursday, uh, just for my family. So we'll, we're gonna be eating those five things with with the uh, with big salad. No cranberry sauce. Yeah, you don't you don't got a UTI dress. You don't do the cranberry. I I am I don't I'm not really a cranberry lover, uh, but my wife is, so she likes to make a. She likes to get the the fresh cranberries, and she'll like reduce that and make a cranberry sauce with that. Mm, yeah. I don't. I, I'm stick. I like turkey and gravy. That's that's my go-to. Wow. Okay. We're, we're hungry, so yeah. You just so described like my usual round one. Like okay, that's what I get in round one. <laughs> then I go back and I get the ham and the mashed potatoes, you know, and the green bean no. thing with the green beans. What What about desserts? Oh. Oh, okay. So dessert. Oh, um, Strap in, everybody. <laughs> so after I eat all my vegetables, I'm a good boy, so I, I deserve some dessert. Uh, my go-to is uh, my mother-in-law makes a mean apple pie. Mm. And I love that. Apple pie. Uh, my mom, she's a baker. She's my baker here at uh, Book Box. Right. She, everything she makes is really good. But mm. um, her pumpkin pie and... Um, she makes these cookies with my kids all the time. Like uh, it's like almost like cake batter, but she makes it in like a cookie form. And she sprinkles some some sugar for the kids on top of that. Uh, the cookie, pumpkin pie, and apple pie. That I'm set. But no cream on top. I'm not a big cream guy. I just like the, the apple pie and pumpkin pie as is. Straight up. Yeah. You know what I'm gonna do tomorrow when I we because uh, we have Thanksgiving meals that we're we're making uh, for our customers right. uh, today and tomorrow. I'm going to drop off a few plates for you guys to, to sample there. Nice. Oh. Good. Yeah. It's going to be Thanksgiving breakfast. We're almost going to start guilt tripping you, but I, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, when do I kick up the guilt trip here? You, you know, I was, I was just thinking about it, guys. There, there's a restaurant. Oh, um, I believe it's it's closed now, but it was up in um, up in Dededo, uh near American Grocery, and it was it was very much known for its pies. Can we say which one it was? I have no idea what you're talking okay. no, about. Village Inn. I mean, I don't even know if they're. Oh, open. yeah. No, so they're I mean, they're, they're very much. Yeah, they're very much known for their pie. And I like how Chuby actually mentioned apple pie because they would actually offer. And they said, "Do you want traditional American style apple pie, or do you want apple pie without the sugar?" I mean, it would. There would still be like a little bit of you know cinnamon in the actual pie filling, but you know they wouldn't put you know all the. You don't have to bring Jason anything. He can go get at that whatever <laughs> place he's talking about. You yeah. can go up there and get. It's no, but I was, you know that that was interesting because up until that point I was like, okay, apple pie is apple pie, but you actually can get it, you know, like sugar free. Have you ever had apple pie yeah, with cheddar cheese? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, the gin had some great pies. They even did the uh, the berry pie. They had like cherry, blueberry. Uh, whatever berries there oh, are, yeah. you can get on. Well, they had they had them, and I, I when we went there to eat, I was kind of um, I was amazed at how many pies are they were making. And right. I, I tried the apple pie without the sugar; it was really good. How about a rhubarb pie? That's good. They had they that. Did, did mm. See me? I just go for the <laughs> lemon meringue. Oh no! <laughs> All right, uh, Chuby, it's been a really good talk, and we're very excited about. Um, Tomorrow, how many reminders should we send you? <laughs> How many reminders should we send you about tomorrow? Oh, good lord! 
Mm. Uh, send me a reminder tonight and tomorrow morning. <laughs> Not a problem. I got. I'll set an alarm. I got you guys though. Hey, you guys have been doing a really, really great job. I love uh, waking up and listening to you guys on the way to work. And as we're working, we have you guys on on speaker. Uh, but happy Thanksgiving, happy uh, Thanksgiving. Guam. Happy Thanksgiving to you guys, and everyone stay safe and healthy. You too, uh, happy Jess. Happy Thanksgiving. Always good touching base with you, and appreciate the support, my man. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving, Jess. Take care. We'll see you, happy guys. Jesse Rosario Chuby of Boca Box. They're definitely uh, taking this uh, pandemic uh, serious. Uh, always good to touch uh, base yeah. with them. That, that was brought to you by the Thrive Coalition, uh, by the way. Our partners on the Thrive Coalition remind you that it takes an entire village to raise healthy and drug-free youth. Okay? Uh, we're coming back with uh, the Department of Public Health and Social Services. Uh, kind of talk about uh, some of the COVID inspections uh, that they've been doing of uh, restaurants and uh, businesses. That's next right here on The Link, which is...